Today, I'm going to go through and answer all of the top Googled questions about the Create Mod. And our first question is going to be how to increase speed. Now, there are actually a few different ways to increase the speed of your Create contraptions. Now, to actually see what speed you're going at, you're going to use these speedometer items, and it'll give you this little dial that'll show you how fast you're going. Now, to actually see that in numbers, you're going to want to put the engineer's goggles on your head, and you'll get this little pop-up that shows you how fast your device is spinning. So we can see that our base water wheel spins this at 8 RPM. Now, the first and cheapest way to increase speed is with cogs. So, a small cog that's spinning a large cog will have the speed of that large cog. And that's because our small cog needs to spin twice for our large cog to spin just once. Now we can do the opposite of that, where if I place a large cog here and I have that spinning a small cog, every time this goes all the way around, it'll spin our small cog twice. So you can see we double our speed to 16 RPM. Now the second way to change our speed is going to be using this adjustable chain gear shift. And essentially the way this works is if you have this in a line of other chain drives and you have it being the first one, you can see that right now we are running at 8 p.m. on both ends. But if I go ahead and flick this lever, you can see it doubles the speed of our whole line all the way up to 16 RPM. So that's a really quick way to double the speed of your line. And this does work the other way too. So at the end here, I have another one of our adjustable chain gear shifts. So if I go ahead and flick this lever, it'll actually have it. So you can see we went from 8 RPM down to 4 RPM using this chain gear shift. And the last and most advanced way to change speed is going to be your rotational speed controller. So to actually make this work, you do need to place a large cog above it. And then you need to turn either the large cog or the speed controller and you get this little indicator here, which you can hold right click and change our speed. So you can see I can change all the way from 256 to one. So if I change this down to one, you can see returning at one RPM. And if I go ahead and change this all the way to 256, you can see we're moving at 256 RPM and we're maxing out our rotation speed. This is easily the most advanced and most useful version. However, early game, these are really helpful because you do need brass and precision mechanisms to craft these up. Next, we're going to talk about how to make andesite casings. Now, for andesite casings, there's only a few things that you need. First, you need an axe and andesite alloy, which is crafted up with two zinc nuggets and two andesite, or two andesite and two iron nuggets. And once you get to the mixing stage, you need a zinc nugget and andesite or iron nugget and andesite. So you're essentially using half the materials to get your alloy. The next thing you need is some oak logs. So all you gotta do is right click to strip your oat logs and then right click those with andesite alloy, which will get you your andesite casings. And the way I usually do this is I'll just go up to a tree, chop down our leaves, strip down the tree, make your andesite casings, and then I usually grab a wrench because with the wrench, if you hold shift and right click, you can automatically immediately pick these up without having to mine them. And I find that to be the quickest way early game to get lots and lots of casings. And of course, these can be automated. So by pushing them over a saw and then under a deployer, which is holding your zinc, you can fully automate your casings. So you can see our log will get sawed to be stripped and then it will get deployed with our andesite alloy, and then we get our andesite casings at the end. So now that we talked about andesite casings, another question we're gonna answer is how to make brass. Now crafting brass looks pretty easy. You just gotta mix zinc and copper together underneath a heated blaze burner, but getting your blaze burner can be a little tricky because by default, after you craft it, your blaze burner will be empty. Now there are two ways to get that, both of which require going to the nether. The first is to click on a blaze, which will then capture it and put it into a blaze burner. The other option is just to click directly on a blaze spawner. So you don't actually have to wait for them to spawn. You can just go find a spawner and capture them up or just grab one that's floating around another fortress. Once you have your blaze burner, place it underneath the basin and then place a mechanical mixer one block above. And then you're gonna to toss in your copper and your zinc and then power it up with coal. Now you can see we do have an issue where our mixer isn't actually turning and it'll actually tell us what's going on. It's not going at enough speed. So we do need a minimum of 32 speed, but once you're at that speed, it will then mix up your items. And as you can see, it is now mixing up and crafting up our brass. And this would be pretty easy to automate. Just have both your copper and zinc coming in and then just have your brass being funneled out. And our next question along the same vein of trying to progress through the crate mod is how to make precision mechanisms. Now to make the mechanisms, you need to deploy a cog, a large cog, and then an iron nugget to a gold sheet. So 
First step is going to be pressing gold into a gold sheet. We are then going to deploy a small cog and a large cog and an iron nugget. Now what you'll notice is we get an incomplete precision mechanism and that's because to actually make our mechanism we need to do this five times. Now you could just build a line of five of these or what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a funnel on here and filter it for our incomplete mechanism which will send our mechanisms back through our line and you can see it'll get pressed once, twice, a third time and as you can see our little bar went up on our incomplete mechanism. So if we just wait for all these to cycle through, we'll be left with a bunch of complete mechanisms at the end of our line. And as you can see, we ended up with a few precision mechanisms. Now, what you'll also notice is we got a cog and a golden nugget. And that's because when you make these, you get a little bit of salvage. So you only have 80% chance to actually get your mechanism. Then we'll get some random scrap, which is pretty much like the ingredients that go into crafting it. So the next question we're going to answer is how to change rotation direction. Now, if you have a block with an input, whether that be a creative motor or your traditional speed controller, if you hold right click on that input, you can actually see it'll tell you which direction it's going to turn. So if I move it from this bottom bar up to the top bar, you can see our rotation direction has turned. And of course, this works the same with our rotational speed controller. You can see our cogs moving one way. If you move it down, it'll start moving the other way. Now, let's just imagine that this direction is locked. The easiest way to change direction that I feel like most people are going to end up using is the gearboxes. So you craft a gearbox with four gears and a cog, and then there is a vertical for it variant which can be crafted by putting a regular gearbox in your crafting grid. To use these, all you gotta do is put them in line of your shaft, and then it will reverse directions. So you can see by default, this moves backwards. Then if I throw this on here, it'll move forward. And of course, the same thing is gonna work with our vertical gearbox. And another really clever way to do this is using regular cogs. So we can put one cog here, and then if we put another cog here, you can see that reverses the direction of our belt. And that's because this cog turns this cog the other way. Now this does come with the caveat of having to offset it by one block, but as long as you're not building too compactly, this should actually work out pretty nice for you. Now, if you need a machine that can change directions on the fly, that's where you'll want to craft up a gear shift, which can be crafted up with a casing, a cog wheel, and a redstone dust. And essentially the way this works is when you put a redstone signal into it, it then automatically changes the direction of the output. So if you want pure control and you want to be able to switch back and forth, the gear shift is going to be the block for you. Now, this next question is a bit of a doozy and I actually have an hour long video going over the topic, and that is how to make trains. So we're just going to go through the basics here. So first thing you need to do is craft a train station, right click that on a train track, and then place it down somewhere in your world. Now you need to right click on that track station and click create new train. And in this inventory, it'll kind of give you a little bit of information about what you actually need. Now to actually create your first train, you're going to craft up a train casing and then right click that on this little blue section of the track, which will then place a bogey. Now there are a few different versions. There's a small wheel and a large wheel version, which you can then just right click on the track to cycle. Now by default, this is treated as its own car, and if we go and place more of these bogies down, they will each individually be treated as a car. Now if I were to go ahead and connect these, now this is treated as a single car, and then this would be the second car on our train. Now there's only a few requirements to get trains to actually work. First, you need at least one bogey, then you need a train controls facing forward, and that's based on the direction you place your original train station, so you can see this is going to kind of tell you which way forward is. Then you also need blocks on every single one of your cars. So I need to go ahead and put some blocks on here. And we also need to make sure that it's super glued. So just right click this, super glue this together, and then super glue our second car together. Now we can go ahead and click assemble train and we have assembled our train. And to make this move, we're just gonna go ahead and right click on our train controls and then we can move it forwards and backwards. And obviously that's just the very basic, so please go check out the other video on my channel for all the details on how to make your train and train networks. And our next question is how to fill a fluid tank. And I really do understand why this is a question, because in creative, all you need to do is right click tanks. However, if you go into survival, right clicking tanks doesn't do anything. So if we want to actually fill up our tank, let's say with water, what you can do is if you have an infinite source, place a fluid pipe right above it, and then if you go ahead and power pump, you can see our water is pumped into our tank. 
So that's the easiest way to get water into a tank if you need water. Now sadly, this doesn't work the same with lava. So if we're to fill this pool up with lava, what you'll notice is it will actually take out lava, which is great, but it'll only take out the one block. So there are a few different ways around this. The first of these is the item drain. So the item drain will empty out anything that is above it. So if I throw the lava block on here, it'll empty out. And then you can see our lava is then pumped into our tank. And this is great, not just for items like lava and water, but actually if you're doing potions or um, drinks from any other mods, the item drain is the way you're gonna wanna go. So you can see we can take this fire resistant potion and then pump this over to our tank. Now at scale, you really don't wanna be using the item drain, let's say for lava to power your factory. So the tool we're gonna to wanna to use is the hose pulley. So what this does is it essentially sucks out a big body of water. So if we're to go ahead and lower this down in this lava, you can see it'll suck out all the lava out into our tank. And this is great if you want to clear a large area of water and store it away, or you want to get lava in the nether. Now the hose pulleys won't actually empty stuff out if it's over 5,000 blocks of your liquid. So in the nether, if you find a big enough pool, you can actually have unlimited lava using the hose pulley. And our next question is how to unglue something. Now this is a relatively simple question. If you have something that's glued up, all you need to do is hover over the box and left click, and you will unglue that block. Now, let's say we have a movie contraption. When it's moving, there is no way to unglue it or do anything to it. However, when it's stopped, you will be able to unglue your contraption. And because you can see now that we've unglued it, now only our bottom block is moving. So pretty straightforward. No matter what orientation this stops in, it will be glued in that orientation for you to then unglue. And next, we're going to go over how to use a schematic. Now, schematics are actually really quite easy to use. So first thing, you need to craft a schematic table and a schematic and quill. What the schematic and quill allows you to do is right click one corner and then right click a second corner to set your region. Once that's done, if you look at any face of this, you can hold control and scroll, which will either make the area bigger if you scroll down towards you or make the area smaller if you scroll up and away from you. Once you have your space defined, right click again to give your schematic a name. Once you have your schematic named, you now have it created. However, this is still gonna be a schematic in Quill. So the next thing you wanna do is go into your schematic table. So in our schematic table, we're gonna go ahead and choose the schematic we want. And then we can either put in a empty schematic or our schematic in Quill and basically set our schematic to that. So I'm gonna use an empty schematic and that'll essentially load our schematic into our empty schematic. Now to place it down in the world, all you gotta do is right click wherever you want it and it will place down your schematic. Now to position it, initially you'll be on X and Y. So if I hold down control and I look at a face, I can move it in the X and Y direction. Now if I hold alt, I can change what thing we're doing. So now I can move it in Y, which is essentially up and down. The other thing you can do is position, which will basically allow you to reset and choose a new position and right click. The next one is rotate, which will rotate at 90 degrees every time you hold control and do the scroll wheel. And then the last one is mirror, which allows you to hold control to mirror it along the plane that you're facing. So once you have your schematic in place, you then hold alt and scroll over to print. And if you're in creative, you can just right click and that'll print it in place. However, if you're in survival, you do need to place it into a schematic cannon. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that in my schematic cannon, which will place it here. And I also need to put some gunpowder in my schematic cannon as well. And the last thing that you can do is if you put a book here, it'll write down all the pieces that you need to make your schematic. So if I open this up, it'll give me a material checklist of cyan concrete. And the really cool thing is this works with the clipboard item from Create2. So I can right click this and actually check them off as I collect my items. So now that I have my cyan concrete and my schematic cannon, We'll go ahead and drop those in a chest next to our cannon. And then we can go ahead and hit play. And then it will place down our schematic in survival. And you get a little ding when it's done and your schematic is now placed. Now this does have a few different options. First, we have our different items for how we're gonna place. So our options are don't replace solid blocks, which will essentially make it not override blocks that are existing in your area. The next one is a replace solid with solid, which will, if there's a block there, it'll replace that block with the block in your schematic. Replace solid with any, which will essentially replace any block with stuff that is blocks or tile entities or kind of anything else that could replace it. And then finally, replace solid with empty will clear out the entire area of your schematic, whether you have blocks there or not. 
And then we also have a button where we can turn on skip missing blocks. And then one that has says protect block entities, which will essentially hold the data as it plays down chests and stuff. Now this next question is a bit of a tough one and that's where to start in the create mod. Now, honestly, the very first thing I would do if I was new, I would just kind of look at these items and just kind of ponder them. So if you hold W over most create items, you get a ponder screen. And this is a really great way to just learn what these do and how they work. So you can kind of page through here or just kind of watch the animation and see how they do. Um, it's the best feature of any mod ever. That's not actually true. I'm sure there's other cool stuff, but it is really, really cool. Um, just be able to see what they do. So I would spend some time just kind of learning about all the different blocks and kind of what they do. Now, as for getting your start in building your first contraption, what I would recommend for a good place to start is a tree farm. Now on the surface, that's not that tricky. All you need to do is have a deployer, place down a sapling, and then have a mechanical saw, either spin or move, to break down that tree. Now that on the surface is pretty easy. Where that gets a bit more tricky is you have a lot of options on how to do that. You could use a minecart contraption. You can use a sticky mechanical piston. You can use a mechanical bearing to spin it. You can use a train to go back and forth. You could even use a gantry shaft, which I wouldn't recommend, but you could do it. So what I'd recommend is ponder all these items, see what you think would be the most fun is to build a tree farm, and then just try building one in creative and just kind of learn how the mod works. Now, the other thing about getting started with the create mod is don't watch YouTubers and just play how they play. I like to play it in a way where I make really cool, elaborate builds that aren't maybe the most efficient, but they get a lot of product out and they look really cool while doing it, where some other people might want to build like the most efficient of each machine. So think about how you play normal Minecraft and then play create that way. Whether you want to build things that are just pretty, whether you want to build things that are just effective. Don't spend too much time thinking about the right way to do it. Just think about the way that you want to do it. And after a bit of a tougher one, here's a real simple one. Where to find zinc? Zinc spawns underground in caves, either in deep slate or stone varieties. And it spawns all the way down from Y negative 63 up to Y 70. Now the next question seems to be more of a problem and that's having too many bogeys. So essentially if we have one big train and let's just say I've accidentally connected my rear car to the rest of the train, when I go to assemble it, It'll say assembly failed, too many bogeys, attached three. So what I need to do is disattach this last one. So if I were to go ahead and connect those up, and then we're just gonna connect this last one up on its own. Then when we go to assemble it, it will then assemble successfully. And we have two cars essentially as one train. And then as this goes around the corner, you'll see this will actually be its own unique car. And this is its own car as well. So the next question is asking about toolboxes. So what toolboxes actually are is they're essentially the best uh, solution to uh, inventory management for like your regular survival inventory that I've seen to date. So essentially to craft these up, you will notice that most of these are just dyed variants. So you do need to craft up the brown toolbox and it's relatively cheap. It's actually very cheap, all things considered. And in survival, if you right click, you place it down in the world. And if you left click on it, you'll pick it back up. And inside you'll see this cool little radial menu. So each of these slots essentially holds four stacks of items. So you can see I can very quickly fill these up with all kinds of items. And this also works with tools. You can actually store up to four tools in each spot. So while this is really cool all on its own, just to be able to have so much nice, neat storage, one really cool thing is you have this return all items a toolbox button. So let's say I just kind of got like my anisite casing spread throughout my inventory with a bunch of other stuff. I can hit that button and it'll automatically suck up all the anisite casings it can store right into there. Now, where this gets absolutely amazing is you can name these, of course, which I would definitely recommend doing. So I can go ahead and name this up. Now, once it's named, we're gonna place it back down because if you hold a left alt, you get this little radial menu where you can see your different toolboxes. So if I wanted to name this one tools, this one items, you can do that. But this one's called test. And in here, I have all my different things. So what you can actually do is you click on one of these and it puts it in that inventory slot. And what this is going to do is you can see as I place it, it automatically replenishes the tools or blocks in that location, which is super, super helpful. Now this does have a range. If I go too far away and place down my blocks, it will actually not fill up. And if I run out, you'll see we can actually run out. However, as soon as you go back within range, it'll 
instantly fill it back up and give you your items. Now this does work with your tools as well. And the really, really cool thing about this is even if it's taking durability damage and we go to put it back, it'll actually stack it back up even though it has durability taken out, which is super cool. So you can see if I empty this out, you'll see our one with durability will stack up with the rest, which is really quite useful. Now, another really neat thing is let's say we have our inventory all fold up with our different things and oh, okay, we're done working for the day and I wanna put these back. Instead of finding your toolbox in this menu, there's actually a button here which says return all items to nearby toolboxes, which return everything to all my toolboxes. And there's also unequip. So if I'm hovering over one of the items I already have selected, I can either change them out or I can just unequip them. So this is just like super useful. I would definitely recommend learning how to use toolboxes if you haven't already. They are probably the best block in the whole mod. So now we're gonna talk about all of the best of the create mod. So our best power sources, early game 100% is going to be your large water wheel. It's gonna give you a great bang for the buck. Now late game, you're gonna wanna have your steam engines. Um, obviously at first, you're just gonna be using coal to heat them up, but then eventually you're gonna have your blaze cakes to superheat them to get your maximum output. So next is gonna be best water wheel setup. In past versions of the crate mod, you had to have flowing water on each edge of your water wheel. However, now it doesn't matter. They can be flowing at any speed at any point. So your best setup is just gonna be to place some water underneath your water wheels, and then you'll be good to go as long as that water is flowing. Now best farms, I don't want to go into specifically what you should be farming. I think that's up to you as far as the best farming farm. What I would highly recommend is a mechanical bearing and then basically just spin your saws or spin your harvesters to harvest crops or to plant and chop trees. I think this is the most efficient and kind of easy to understand way to harvest crops and harvest trees. Now for the maximum steam engine, you need to feast blaze cakes into nine blaze burners and then have a three by eight fluid tank. And you need to feed two pipes running at 256 speed into that fluid tank with water. And that'll let you run eight team steam engines all at once. And that'll give you 290,000 stress units, which is amazing. Now for this next question, I am jumping into a bit of a different world because we're talking about add-on mods and kind of what my favorites are. So the number one that I would always make sure to include is going to be create enchantment industry. What this is actually gonna allow you to do is automate your enchanting, automate your experience collecting, and basically just allow you to do a lot of really cool stuff with the mod. But as far as new features go, I definitely think Steam and Rails is gonna take the cake for me. I wouldn't wanna play without it. I mean, you can have different sized trains and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. So I definitely recommend checking that mod out if you haven't yet. Now for decoration mods, I really haven't dove too deep into what my options are, but I just like the classic, the Create Deco casing and the Create Deco mods. They had a lot of new blocks and a lot of really cool stuff you can do with them. And for food, we obviously have our classic Create Confectionery. However, I would almost recommend Create Garnished because it adds a lot of really cool recipes and a lot of neat stuff you can do with it. So I would check out that mod if you want to add a little bit more food to your pack. Now that being said, Farmer's Delight is definitely a must have. It's not exactly a create add-on, but it does work really seamlessly with create. Now for best heat source, that's gonna depend on where you're at in the game. Obviously early game, I'd highly recommend charcoal because that'll let you power up your blaze burners and it's infinitely renewable. And then for late game, obviously blaze cakes is actually gonna get you the most heat and actually allow you to supercharge your blaze burners. Now, for the best food in the crate mod, if you're just looking at numbers, it's going to be the honeyed apple. It actually does rival golden carrots for how much saturation it gives you. It's a little bit less, but you actually get more hunger haunches than golden carrots. So, honestly, honeyed apples is a pretty good option for you. Now, there's also chocolate glazed berries, which do pretty good, just a little bit less saturation and half a haunch less of hunger. And then we have sweet rolls, which are a little bit worse but I mean, who doesn't want a sweet roll? And then we have bars of chocolate and builder's tea. Now builder's tea doesn't actually give you any hunger back. However, when you drink it, you get haste for three minutes. So it's definitely worth crafting up. And one other thing to keep in mind with the crate mod is it adds a new recipe where you can get wheat flour by milling your wheat, which gives you one and then approximately another half a wheat flour if you look at the numbers. And then you can mix that up into dough with some water. And then you can use that to either make cakes really easily or cook it to get extra bread per wheat. But still at the end of the day, honeyed apples, which are just crafted by dispensing some honey on an apple, 
or just crafting up golden carrots, which can be automated with the create mod, are going to be your best food items in the mod. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I was able to answer some of your questions about the create mod. Now, if you're interested in taking a look at this world and taking a look at these contraptions for yourself, it will be available down in the description. And that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.